the events take place in England, in the year 1021. In the first shots we see a boy toiling in a mine on an equal footing with adult men. After receiving a loaf of bread for his work, on his way home little Robert saw a performance by a wandering healer. While Rob was distracted, his bread was stolen. In the evening, the mother reads a prayer before a meager dinner. Suddenly the woman feels sick. During the night, she wakes up with severe abdominal pain. A frightened Rob runs to Barber. The priests were already in the house. Rob begged them to help his mother, but the priest said that only the grace of God could heal the woman. Soon the woman passed away, and the children were left orphans. A local family agreed to take the two younger children along with utensils, and Rob was abandoned to his fate. Barber refused to take him with him and headed away from the settlement. As he halted for the night, he realized there was someone in his wagon. It turned out to be Rob hiding. Barber tried to chase the boy away, but took pity nonetheless. So they continued their journey together. The grown-up Rob and Barber performed together in front of crowds, and then took patience. In the evening, after having fun with a local minx, Barber advised Rob to find a woman for a one-night stand too, but the guy is interested in very different things. During another journey, Rob asked his mentor if he had ever wondered how the human body worked. Most of all, the guy wants to figure out how to cure the gut disease from which his mother passed away. After hearing Rob propose to study anatomy on dead bodies, Barber told him never to talk about such things again, because the church does not accept it. Soon Rob was assisting a mentor who was pulling a patient's tooth without any anesthesia. At night, when Barber was getting drunk, the guy told him that the patient didn't have long to live. Barber only laughed at him, but there really was that patient lying outside with no signs of life. The crowd blamed the healers and wanted reprisals. When it was over, Rob pulled the mentor from their burning wagon. Soon their lives returned to normal. One day they received a patient who had to have his finger amputated. All went well, and then Rob carefully applied a bandage to the young man. As more and more patients came in, Rob gradually gained experience. One day Barber told his mentee that he had now surpassed his teacher. When they arrived in the village of the Jews, Barber was horrified at the fact that infants were being circumcised here. Barber hoped that his blindness would be cured here, although he was sure that it could not be cured. After the operation, the cataract actually disappeared, and Rob was amazed. He later questioned the healer as to where he had learned this. The healer replied that it was in Isfahan, a city very far from London. The healer showed him the city on the map where the world's greatest healer, Avicenna lives. It would take more than a year to get to Isfahan. But that's not the worst part. The fact is that in the Muslim countries through which the way lies, Christians are not liked. Rob told Barber everything he had learned about Avicenna. They say he has two palaces where he heals people. No matter what, Rob was going to go east. Barber mocked him, and in the morning he didn't find the guy in his tent. Rob! After catching up with Rob in the woods, Barber tried to convince him to give up the idea. But Rob wanted to learn the mysteries of the human body and help people. Barber drove the guy to the shore and gave him some of the money. Both couldn't stand it and cried before parting. Rob was willing to pretend to be a Jew in order to devote himself to medicine. He had a long journey ahead of him on a ship. When the journey finally came to an end, the guy was in Egypt. The first thing he did was to put on a Jewish robe and have himself circumcised. The road ahead lay through the desert. It was two months away from Isfahan. At night, during a halt, Rob noticed a girl reading in the tent. At daybreak he got a closer look at her. Rob did not give his real name, introducing himself as Yessi. He didn't know the prayers, but he pretended to pray with the others. In the afternoon, the travelers came upon a village that had been looted by Seljuk nomads. Among the survivors, Rob found a little girl. Tuve didn't want to take her with him, but Rebecca said that she had a place in the palanquin. At night Rebecca woke Rob, who made no secret of being a barber in London. She said that the girl was getting worse and had a fever. Rob took all the necessary measures, and soon the child felt better. Later it turned out that Rebecca was going to Isfahan because an important deal is waiting for her there. Suddenly the caravan was caught in a sandstorm and the camels began to scatter. When it was over, all the wagons had been trashed. Rob found Rebecca's storybook, but she herself was nowhere to be found. He and Tuve seemed to be the only survivors. The two of them had to walk across the desert together. One day Tuve saw Rob praying to a Christian god. But Tuve did not live until morning. Rob was running out of strength, but he still made it to Isfahan. It looked like the people in the city were celebrating something. Rob had never seen fireworks before. When the Shah passed by, everyone began to bow down before him. 
The next day Rob tried to get a meeting with Avicenna, but since he had no letters of recommendation from famous scientists, the doctor's secretary Dawood Hussein ordered the guards to throw the vagabond out into the street. He woke up in a bunk. A certain healer wanted to stitch up his head wound. Rob was surprised that he felt no pain. It turned out that the wound had been covered with poppy seed oil to relieve the pain. Rob told that he had traveled halfway around the world to learn from Avicenna. The next morning a disgruntled Dawood Hussein brought him clean clothes and told him that Avicenna was ready to teach him. Rob immediately joined the other disciples of the great physician. He was surprised to realize that the healer who had sewn up his wound was Avicenna. The family of a Jewish disciple named Mir Din agreed to host Rob in their home. When they asked him to recite a prayer before dinner, everyone was confused, but Rob assured them that this is how Jews pray in England. There were in the streets between churchmen and soldiers. Many religious people are unhappy that Shah Allah patronizes the development of science. This is considered a sin. From then on, the hard lessons of medicine began. Rob was making progress. One day Kareem took him and Mirdin out for some fun. The guys couldn't believe there were girls with fiery red hair in England. Meanwhile, the Seljuks are plotting against the Shah Allah. One day an influential friend of Mirdin's family introduced the young men to his Spanish bride, Rebecca. Bar Capera invited Rob and Mirdin to the wedding. He also narrated that his bride almost died in a sandstorm, but she and the girl were saved by a guide. At the wedding the guests were cheerful, and only Rebecca was sad. As a gift, Rob gave her back a book of fairy tales, and Mirdin noticed it. At night for grief Rob decided to use the services of a minx. At some point he realized there was something wrong with her health. He took her to the hospital and called Avicenna. Though the girl looked perfectly healthy, Rob said she would not live until morning. They saw gangrene on her leg. Later, when the girl was cured, Rob confessed to his teacher that he could sense people's deaths. He felt the same way when his mother was dying. Avicenna advised Rob to treat it not as a curse, but as a gift. Suddenly the Sultan's men came to the hospital to take the doctors away. It turned out that Shah Allah had injured his wrist while fighting the Seljuks, who wanted to make a peace treaty on their terms. The Shah was interested in a disciple of Avicenna who had arrived from England. At that time the Seljuks, having received the Shah's refusal, were preparing to attack. The leader of the nomads ordered his men to find a man sick with the plague. He was released into the city. When they saw the sores on the sick man's body, the people were horrified. Avicenna was told what had happened. The people in the city panicked, fearing an epidemic. Avicenna and Rob advised Shah Allah to leave the city immediately with his subjects, but he would not do so, believing it to be an unjustified panic. Everyone in the hospital was preparing for the worst. Avicenna told his disciples that if anyone wanted to leave, he better do it now. The rest would fight death. In the end none of the disciples left. The first infected woman from the city was brought in. Soon the number of patients increased tenfold. According to Rob, some patients can be saved, but for the rest there is no hope. However, Avicenna said that they would fight for every person's life. The soldiers locked the gates to prevent the spread of the plague. Bar Capera ran away, leaving his young wife behind. Rob found Rebecca in the water. Together with Mir Din, he took the plague-infected beloved to the hospital. Rob suggested that Avicenna study the nature of the disease on corpses, but he was still dubious about the idea. Not much time had passed, and about a thousand people had already died in the city. At night Rob read stories to Rebecca. In the morning he guessed that the plague was carried by fleas, which meant that we had to get rid of the bodies as soon as possible, as well as secure ourselves with special clothing. Besides fleas, rats were a threat. Doctors made a strong poison to get rid of all the rodents, and then burned them. These measures helped, and the mortality rate among patients began to decrease. Rebecca felt better, and Rob took her to the roof, where they held hands. Once they knew the threat was over, people began to return to the city. Kareem however became infected. Soon he passed away beside his faithful friends. Rebecca would have to go home. Rob didn't want to let her go and kissed her. Passion arose between young people, but then they had to break up. Rebecca went back to her husband. Shah Allah held a feast in honor of the doctors, the heroes of Isfahan who had saved people. Later, the Shah decided to speak to Rob personally, even though he was a commoner. Shah Allah stated that he wanted to be a friend to him. After class, Rob started arguing with Avicenna again. The guy believed that human life was not under God's control, but their own. Avicenna sent him to a patient in the final stages of a gut disease. The man named Kasim was in a very serious condition. 
he was well aware that he was dying, and Rob gently asked if his body could be used when it was over. Rob took the corpse to a secluded place and decided to get inside the body to find out why gut disease was so dangerous to humans. Rob recorded and sketched all his observations in a notebook. Soon he got to the appendix, which is the root of all trouble. Rebecca refused to share the matrimonial bed with her husband, inventing reasons. Rob was sleepy in class, while the Seljuks were building a new plot against the Sultan. Among them was Dawud Hussein. Church revolts began in the city. The leader of the Seljuks wanted to overthrow Shah Allah. His army would be in Isfahan in ten days. Rob was sent for by the Sultan, who invited him to go hunting. He intended to catch a lion, and then enjoyed the company of the young healer. Rob realized that Shah Allah had some kind of health problem. Concerned about his wife's condition, Bar Kapera invited Mir Din to examine her. The young doctor realized that she was pregnant and that the child was not her husband's. Mir Din told Rebecca that if people found out about this, she would be judged. So Rebecca must lie down with her husband tonight to make him think it was his child. At night, Rob continued to study anatomy while Rebecca did what was required of her. When Rob heard footsteps, he extinguished the torch to remain unnoticed. The next morning Rebecca left home without her husband's knowledge. Meanwhile, Rob had been captured by the Seljuks, accusing him of witchcraft. Noticing his wife's reaction to this, Bar Capera demanded an explanation. Rob was thrown in jail, and Bar Capera was deciding what to do with his unfaithful wife. When Rob was taken to court, Mirdin managed to tell him that Rebecca was pregnant. Avicenna too was tried. It turned out that they had been ratted out by Dawud Hussein, who claimed that they were desecrating the dead. As proof, Dawud Hussein showed drawings. No one wanted to listen to Rob, who argued that Avicenna had nothing to do with it. As final proof, the patient's body was brought in. Avicenna and Rob were sentenced to execution for this crime. When Rob shouted that he was not a Jew, everyone fell silent. Then the guy revealed his true identity and his real name. Rob recited a Christian prayer, but other evidence was required of him. Since he had previously circumcised himself, he could not convince the court. In the jail cell, Avicenna asked his disciple what he saw inside the human body. Rob told him that things were not really as they were written in the books. When Shah Allah heard what had happened, he demanded Avicenna's release. Then the preacher said with a smirk that the Seljuk army was near. Suddenly the Sultan began to feel ill, while in the meantime the enemies were approaching the gate. Avicenna and Rob were about to be executed, but suddenly the Sultan's soldiers massacred all the religious fanatics. The healers were brought to Shah Allah, who had a gut disease. Since only Rob saw the human body from the inside, Shah Allah demanded that he perform the operation. Because if the Sultan died, his army would surrender to the Seljuks. In return, Rob asked to save Rebecca, who was about to be executed. Rob asked Mirdin for help. Though angry with his friend, he agreed to participate. Shah Allah was given opium. At this time the Seljuks were preparing for an attack. Rob, Avicenna and Mirdin began the operation. All the courtiers waited with bated breath for the news. In spite of the effects of the opium, the Shah felt pain. The Seljuks were wreaking havoc in the city, in the course of which many people died, including Bar Capera. At this time the operation was almost over, and Rob was stitching up the incision, imagining in his mind how he was saving his mother. As soon as he regained consciousness, Shah Allah was about to lead his troops himself. He told his savior doctors to go to the mountains. When the Lord came out to them in his armor, morale soared. Rob went back for Rebecca, and Avicenna went back for his disciples. On the battlefield, Shah Allah felt ill, but he led his troops into battle anyway. Realizing that Avicenna had not gone with them, Rob went back for him. The teacher was sitting in the library, where all the medical works of yesteryear had been burnt. When Rob saw the empty vial, he realized that Avicenna had taken the poison. Now Robert himself will have to resume and continue all their work. There were many casualties on the battlefield, and Shah Allah was also killed. The city surrendered to the Seljuks. With one last look at Isfahan, Rob, Rebecca, and everyone else got ready to leave. Many years passed. The old barber learned of a doctor from the east who had returned to his native land, and with his wife had built a hospital where he helped people pro bono. Barber knew at once that it was Robert, and he set out to find him.